In this lecture, we're going to talk about how we can mock the authentication mechanism in wiremock.net. So if you have noticed in most of your application, you can also pass the authentication in the header itself by just going to the postman and something like this. And if you just type for authentication using the authorization, and here you can pass the bearer token if you wanted to. You can pass the authentication in the header or sometimes you can pass directly using the authorization somewhere, something like this. So you can do it either way, like however your application does. So I'm going to go with the one with the headers approach where we have got the what is called as an authorization. So I'm going to go over here within our application, which is the wiremock.net server. So I'm going to copy this entire thing this time and I'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to perform a login operation this time. So it's going to be a login. So for doing that, I'm going to use the same with path, but I'm going to give a stub with the path as a login over here. And now with this using method, I'm also going to use a combination of what is called as a with header method. And over here, I'm going to pass the header as what is called as authorization, something like this. So we can pass the authorization over here in the header and we need to pass an authorization in such a way that it can have a bearer token over here. So the bearer token, you might know that it could be a long length of string, which could be combination of the numbers and the letters, something like this. And then you're going to have that supplied for your header within your application to make the operation happen, right? So this is how you actually pass things. So in order for you to make this thing even more readable, we can just write something like this so that you will notice how easy it is to read. So it's going to be with request.create with a path using get with the header and then respond with something like this. So now it's more readable, right? So now if I try to save this and if I try to run that, you will know that this particular operation we cannot achieve unless until you have the exact bearer token in it. So if I just go to the header and if I go to the uh, mocking server and then if I copy this bearer token, and if I paste it in the authorization, and if I hit send, then it is gonna be giving me that this could be any product. So probably just to get rid of this, login successful. Uh, and now if I try to run this, if I go to the postman, if I hit send, you will notice that it's gonna give me a message saying login successful, which is great. But now, because we don't know the bearer token, all the things in advance, we can not just copy paste this all the time, and you know the trick what I'm going to be basically going to do, right? So we are going to use what is called as the wildcard matching over here that we have used before in the with path so that it could able to just match that automatically. So I'm just going to say with wildcard matcher and I'm going to give the bearer token in such a way that it could just match with whatever value that we are passing in. So it is just expecting it to have a bearer and then there is going to be a star or asterisk, which is going to match whatever that you are trying to pass in. So that's all we need for this particular operation to happen. So I'm just going to do that over here. I'm going to save it. And if I try to run the wiremock.net server, and if I go to the postman and if I hit send, you will notice that it is going to give me the login accepted over here. So this is the way we can actually tell that we could able to perform a login operation with and much, much easier mocking code, something like this. So this is the way that we can actually write a simple mocking code for the login operation to be successful. So this is one way that you can try to mimic as if like the application is gonna work for you. And just to show you what happens if you don't pass the authorization in it, and if you try to send it, it is gonna tell you the message saying, no matching mapping found. So basically, this is not gonna work. But for that, you can also give another response within the wiremock.net itself. For example, if you wanted to reject if there is any of the request which is not going to be of this particular authorization, then give a different response altogether. You can also write that. 
And I will tell you how that easily it can be done in wiremark.net. For example, this is the positive scenario. And if you want to write a negative scenario where you don't want to let the people to just see the simple not matching mapping found something like this but you need to give a valid response to the caller because in our integration test or in our functional test we always have that kind of expectation to be available you can also do that over here so you can basically say login unsuccessful and then you can actually get rid of this authorization in such a way that you can give probably any value so i'm just gonna say uh, it could be any value that you're going to pass in for the authorization in the header. And then you say the match behavior as reject on the match. So basically you're telling that you're going to be rejecting the request while there is going to be of any of the particular request. So that is how we can actually reject that this particular request of the login is not going to be matching for you. You're going to give a response as the login unsuccessful. And also you can change the status code if you wanted to. So because the status code is currently accepted, you can also tell that the status code is going to be unauthorized, for example, or something like this. You can also set the particular value over here. So now if I just go to the wiremark.net over here, and so you can see that currently if I try to send the one with a bearer token, it is going to give me the login successful. So if I don't pass anything with the authorization in it, and if I hit send, it's going to give me login as unsuccessful. So this is very, very expected behavior happens within our application. So we can also write all the stubbings over here. And I'll also notice that there is going to be a 401 unauthorized status code over here, which means this particular status code is unsuccessful and it's unauthorized. So we're going to get that as well as a part of our response over here. So this is how we can mock the login operation using the authorization in the wiremock.net.